Thank you, Lord. Would you find John again? John 15. Before I get wound up again here, let me say what a pleasure it is to be again at Eagle Mountain Church with your pastors and with you and everybody that's joined on the meetings here and by internet. Isn't it wonderful to be alive today in this time and on the cutting edge of what God is doing in the earth, right? We could be lost in the dark. Just doing our own thing without a clue of what's really going on. But no, God in His grace has let, let us be involved. Let us be right in the middle of everything. Isn't that wonderful? God's a Father who, likes, who, who desires and, and enjoys having His children involved with Him in the family business. Did you know that? He does. He, he, well, he wants all his kids involved in the family. And you talk about working outside the family business, he don't like that at all. Nope. Everybody's got to be in the family business, stay in the family business. And is that all right with you? Yeah. Kingdom business. In John 15, let's begin in verse 4 again. John 15, and for all this week since Sunday night, we've been looking at this and meditating upon this. And do you remember we were excited about it? Do you remember that? Yeah. Right? That's right. About this, John 15, 4 says, Abide in me. Who's talking? Jesus. Jesus. What does abide mean? It means, you know, different definitions put together, to remain in, to continue in. Sometimes you see the word dwell. But two words we use all the time in our modern vernacular is uh, stay and live. So he said, stay in me. Live in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it stay, live in the vine. No more can you, except you live or stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that lives in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man live not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. Are there any withered Christians around? I'm not asking for testimonies. Just what, what do you think? <laughs> do you suppose there are any withered Christians around? Why? Because living in him, staying in him, is not automatic. To being born again. If it were, he wouldn't have told us. Stay in me. And he kept on telling us. I mean, all through this passage, you see it in 14th and 15th and 16th. You see it in 1 John 3 and 4 and, and again and again. Stay in me. Abide in me. Continue in me. Why would he say that? Because if you don't make an effort to, you'll live somewhere else. You'll live in your head, right? You'll live in your problems. You'll live, Romans said, you know, don't be conformed, right? To this world, but be what? Transformed how? Is that automatic to being born again? Is it automatic just after a year or two of being saved? No, no. You, you got this ungodly mentality all around you. And if you don't make an effort to, to stay, everybody say stay. stay. Stay in the Word and let the Word stay and live in you, then you'll think like the unsaved around you and you'll live there. And that'll keep you down. Right? 
That'll keep you living in depression and living in heaviness, living in confusion, living in sickness and poverty and, and failure when that's not your destiny. That's not your call. You are born a victorious one. More than a conqueror. That's who you are. But you got to live like it. Right? And that's what he said. If you live in me and stay in me and my words stay in you and live in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, now, now we're, I'm, I'm getting into something else here now. Jesus said this more than once. He talked about how the Father loved him. Didn't he? Do you suppose Jesus uh, was wavering about how much the Father loved him? He says it as a matter of fact, doesn't he? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue, stay in my love. Did, does the Father love Jesus? Yes. Do you think Jesus, now here, here's a phrase, we're going to hear it again and again. Was he secure in the reality of the Father's love for him? Yes. Do you think he struggled with that? Do you think he spent any time thinking, Father, do you really love me? Do you? I know you said you did, but I just don't feel really like you do today. Did he struggle with that? Or was this settled in his life? Was he aware of this? And was he persuaded of this? And was he secure? In the Father's love. That the Father loved him. So we, we don't even think about that. That he might have struggled with that. Well then he turns around and says. And I have loved you. Like the Father has loved me. Stay in this love. Live here. Now. Don't, don't, uh, don't get away from the beginning of the verse. How did he start out? Verse 9. How did he start out? As the Father has loved me. This is a revelation that we've been lacking in. And it's caused a whole host of problems in our life. In the, the one that God used to pen this book and the uh, passage that we've been reading in 1 John is John. Right? And you know it, we've said it before, but what was his claim to fame? Huh? What, what was his name that he refers to himself by in his own, in the writings God used him to pen? Well, let's look at it. Let's just take the time to turn to it. You're there in John. Uh, go to the 13th chapter. I could read them to you, but let's just take time put your eyes on them on the page. John 13. Now, before the... Uh, let's see. I'm, I'll skip down for time's sake. John 13 and 23... Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Is everybody happy to be here this morning? Yes. Are you wishing you were somewhere else? No. <laughs> I just had the sense 
that at least a few people are not happy to be here. <laughs> oh, you're in a good place. You're, you're in the right place. Righter than you know. <laughs> Go ahead and make the best of it. <laughs> right? You don't even have to like me. You don't. To get something good from God. You... <laughs> you know, any time the Word of God is read, any time the things of God are mentioned, you should get something. Every time. There's been times I got blessed when in my estimation somebody taught error. What do you mean? Well, the Holy Ghost is our teacher. Right? And when they went off on the rabbit trail, in my opinion, that they went to the wrong place, the Holy Ghost is showing me five scriptures as to what's wrong with that and why this is right. And I got revelation. Now, he might have misunderstood when I was going, praise the Lord. <laughs> That I wasn't necessarily backing what he was saying at the moment. But any time, any time and every time the book is opened and the word is read and we pray in the thing, you should get something. You should get something. You should get revelation. You should get help. Right? Even if the preacher ain't doing so hot. You should get something. <laughs> He said, one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Amen. You might want to underline that or look at that again. One of the disciples, what? Jesus. Whom Jesus loved. I want to say that again. One of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Now, because we've read this so many times, this doesn't seem strange to us. But is that how you usually refer to yourself? <laughs> I'll, I'll say something further when we finish reading this. Go, go to the next one here. Uh, in, uh, let's see, 19th chapter of John. 19th chapter of John and verse 26 1926 says, uh, Jesus saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. Jesus saw the disciple whom he loved. Now, now we've read this so many times, so this, this sounds, you know, normal to us, but in, in most people's day-to-day -day operation, they wouldn't have said this. If they'd have said anything, they'd have said, the disciple that loved the Lord. Right? And so many times when you hear people tell me, they're, they're saying, oh, I love the Lord. They love the Lord. We love the Lord. But that's not what he said. What did he say? The Lord loves me. The Lord loves, say that out loud, the Lord loves me. The Lord loves me. Oh, friend. Y'all got to help me this morning now. Are you believing with me? Yes. Believe with me on this. Because the, 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 the problem with this is people think they already know it. And it's a huge deal. He said, I, he said, I'm the disciple whom the Lord loved. And then he said, the Lord saw the disciple who he loved. Keep reading. Go to another one here. There's more than one. In the uh, 21st chapter. 21st chapter and the 7th verse. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved. Why didn't he, why didn't he just say John? Why didn't, why didn't he just say me? It was me. 
Of all the things he could have said, he could have said the disciple that loved the Lord with all his heart. No. The disciple whom Jesus loved. Skip on down to the 20th verse of that same uh, chapter. Then Peter, turning about, sees the disciple, what? Whom Jesus loved. (laughs) The disciple Jesus loved. Why did he say that? He did. But, you know, he knew that God loved more people than just him. He knew God is no respecter of persons. Why did he say that? God used him to pen this book of John and 1 John. So much revelation in here about love. Right? And in his walking with the Lord for this extended period of time, when it came to his confession, what he realized he needed to get in his mouth was that God loved him. Are you getting this now? Now this is not where most of the church world is. Most of the church world is, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I want to challenge you to something. For the next few months, or to the end of the year at least, every time you start to say, I love the Lord... Lord, I love you. I want you to turn it around. If you do this, you're going to get an eye opener. You're going to get a revelation. That this has not been as strong of an area in your life as you might have thought. Say it out loud. The Lord loves me. me. Now let's say it the way he said it. I am the one. one. The Lord loves I am the one the Lord loves. Now, every time you start to say, I love the Lord, you just stop right there and go, the Lord loves me. I am the one he loves. I am the one he loves. This had to be a big deal with John for to hear him to refer to himself. It's like he changed his name from John to the one Jesus loves. Think about it. It was so strong in him. It's like he'd walk up to people and go, Hi, I'm the one Jesus loves. <laughs> John, are you here? The one Jesus loves is here. <laughs> I'm the one he loves. I'm the one he loves. Why? Because, listen, friend, the enemy is... This is one of the areas where he, he is, his subtlety has been effective. He is continuously trying to erode that security. Did you hear me? In your life, that God loves you so he can get fear in. Now go to 1 John. We, we've looked at this. We've talked about it. But go to 1 John 4 and let's see how this... We already have learned some things about this. But see how this ties together. I'm the one he loves. Say it out loud. I'm the one he loves. 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 You should say it and say it and say it and say it. Till it's not just words, it begins to dawn on our spirit. I'm the one he loves. Glory be to God, I'm the one he loves. I'm the one. I'm the one. And see, you can say I'm the one, and we're both right. Right? (laughs) But I can't believe... That God loves you for you. I can agree with you. But you have to believe that for yourself. 
In 1 John 4, that's what he's talking about. 1 John 4. He said, 1 John 4, verse uh, 15. Whoso shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells, lives, stays in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. We have known and we have what? Now that's what we're talking about right now, aren't we? Is it talking about believing that you love God? Hmm? <laughs> we're not moving too fast this morning, are we? That's all right. We're believing God together, right? Let's, let's just let's stay on it till we get there. Is he talking about believing that you love God? Read the verse. We have known and believed the love we have for God. No. No. It's like this other thing we've talked about all week. When you talk about living in love, people, most everybody think that means walking in love with other people. That's the whole of it. No. No. Living in love is living in God. Walking in love with other people is part of it. Right? But there's... Huge amounts. I hope you've, we've gotten a glimpse of it this week uh, of living in love Amen. beyond walking in love with each other. And he said, we have known and we have believed what? The love that God has to us. This is one of, if not the biggest thing you'll ever believe. Far bigger than believing for any financial miracle or, or healing miracle or house or car or clothes or stuff. Far bigger. Why? Because how much love does God have to us? He is love. Right? And that's what the Bible's talking about, about us knowing the, the height and depth and breadth, the width, the entire scope of the love of God. Why? He is love. His love for us is far beyond what we've seen and known and comprehended, but we can comprehend it. I said we can, but it takes faith. And of all the things we've claimed to believe and confess, this should have been on the very top of the list. Are you with me now? That we are believing and confessing what? The love God has for me. To me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Now, see, people think, the problem is, people think they already know that. Yeah, I know that, Brother Keith. I used to sing that when I was a little kid, you know. You know, Jesus loves me, this I know. <laughs> For the Bible tells me so. Sure, sure, we know the Lord loves us. Keep reading, and we'll see exactly how much you know that He loves you. He said, we, verse 16, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. Say that out loud. I believe, I believe the, love the love God has, God has to, me to me and for me. I believe it. I believe it. He said, he that lives dwells, stays in love, lives, dwells, stays in God, and God in Him. And herein is our love made perfect. There is a perfection of this, 
So do you, could you have more revelation by tonight of how much God loves you than you do right now? There is a perfecting, a continuing in this that we may have what? Boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Now look at this one word. Everybody say boldness. boldness. Now keep reading verse 18. There is no what? No fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. Can we tell how much you believe God loves you? It is evidenced by your lack of fear and by your boldness. Did you see that? The more timid we are, the more fearful we are, why is it? We don't know and believe how much He loves us. It's not real to us. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what did He give us? Spirit of power, power and Love, love, love. What's the result of that too? Sound. A fearful mind's not a sound mind. Not disturbed, not depressed, not anxious, not scared. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Said out loud, God loves me. Now, let me, let me go over this again real slowly. Do you have the complete revelation of how much God loves you? If you did, how much fear would you have? Absolutely none. So the evidence of any fear in any area reveals you do not fully or I do not fully believe the love. Huh. <laughs> now back up, <laughs> back up to the third chapter, verse 1. 3 1. Because he said that we might have boldness. When? Well, I turned too quickly. Four. Seventeen. Herein is our love perfected. That we may have what? Boldness. Boldness. Knowing this love makes you bold. Now, so boldness is not what some people have thought it is. It's not working up, uh, being pushy. <laughs> and rude. Some people have, you know, they found a new name for rudeness. Boldness. No. Being, you know why you're bold? You're bold because you're sure. Right? I mean, if, I, if you lived here all your life and I came asking for directions... And you went up down this road going to work or going to church or something, you know, 5,000 times. And, and you knew exactly. I said, where do you go? You know, how do you turn? Well, now, if you didn't know, if you weren't sure, you're not bold. You go, well, let's see. Now, I think you go up here about two miles and take a left. Or is it a right? Uh, I think it's a left. You're not bold. Why? Because you're not sure. But if you're here and you know, then it's not, you're, you're not trying to be arrogant. You're not trying to be pushy or rude. I just say, how you go? You go, oh, 5.2 miles right, left at the station, and there it is. Are you sure? Yeah. Come on, I can't, I can't mess up. Are you sure? Yeah. Absolutely, I've done it, I don't know how many times. Well, you're bold. 
Right? Why? Because you're sure. You know. And what will make you bolder than anything? Knowing how much my God loves me, how much He cares for me, that I am truly the apple of His eye. Oh, glory to God. And that I am always in front of Him and always on His mind. And there is nothing in this universe more important to Him than me. And you. Is that right? But do we believe this like we should? So we haven't. We haven't. And it's evidenced by all of the insecurities and the timidities and the fear and the lack of boldness. All of it comes right back to not believing the love that he has for us. But it can be fixed. I said it can be fixed. And what we do is we use what we've already learned. We use what we've already learned about believing for healing. I mean, we had to ignore the symptoms and say, by stripes, I'm healed. That's right. right? We had to learn to ignore the symptoms and say, no, according to his riches and glory, he meets my needs. And to confess it and to confess it when it didn't look like it and it didn't feel like it, you confess it. And that's why John... Getting the revelation he had, he said, all right, I got this. I got this. Don't call me John no more. I am the one Jesus loves. That's me. And he said it night, and he said it day, and even when he was doing, we're writing one of the most important documents he ever wrote, he had to put it in there four times. <laughs> to make sure you got it. I am the one he loves. I am the one he loves. Oh, friends, say, yeah. <laughs> say it with me out loud. I am the one he loves. 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 You got to keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep why? Because it's not, it's not your head that you want to get it. You want to get it down in your spirit, and you want to get an increased. Rev I don't care how much you think you know how much He loves you. You have not arrived in this. Most people have barely begun. How would we know? All the insecurities, all the fears, right? You know how much God loves you. You can look death right square in the face. No fear. Why? Because God is with you and in you. And you know how much He loves you. You know. So you submit yourself to His will completely knowing He's not going to hurt you. Knowing He's only got your best interest at heart. Right? right? Knowing. So the Lord tells you, leave here and go over there. And people that's been in the Word for 30 years go through six weeks of turmoil. My, my, what am I been here? I got all my friends here and my kids are in school and I just got established in this place of work, and they say the economy's not over there, and I can't even transfer. And why, why is all that? Because you don't know how much God loves you. And you're just not absolutely certain that He's not going to lead you into trouble. He's going to get me over there, and I'm going to go broke. He's going to get me over there and I'm going to get in a mess. <clears throat> this is exactly what's going on. I, I, since we're having so much fun, I might as well go ahead and do it. <laughs> go to Ephesians. Ephesians. 
5. Ephesians 5. Now, this is one of the most popular subjects around. <laughs> Ephesians 5.22 says, Wives, <laughs> Wives do what? Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. The principle is the very same. Right? As unto. For the husband is the head of the wife. Is the headship supposed to be mutual? <laughs> <laughs> the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ, the anointed one, is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is what? Subject or submitted unto the anointed one, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, do people have a lot of trouble with that? <laughs> yeah. A whole lot of folks just completely ignore it. Just completely. They feel like we're living in a new day. And this really doesn't apply. And, people, and, and, you know, all kind of ladies just do not and refuse to do this and act on it. And it has to do with what we're talking about right now. What's the very next thing he says? Husbands. What? Love your wives. Why? Because the Lord knew that this was going to be the biggest problem that the wife had. In submitting, did you hear me? Because it's the biggest problem that his bride encounters in submitting to him because the reason people don't submit is fear. The reason wives don't submit to husbands, the reason Christians don't submit to the Lord, fear. The reason I say this is because you, 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 you get a handle on this. Sometimes quicker and better, a wife to her husband, and she's thinking, Now, if I completely submit to him, he'll ruin my life. <laughs> huh? He'll ruin my life. He'll have me doing all kind of goofy stuff. Now, what did, what did you just get through saying? Yeah, he doesn't love me. I am not convinced that he loves me to the point that he will always be looking out for my best interest. So I'm not submitting. So here the person is in fear and doubting the love. Now let's back up. Somebody says, well, Brother Keith, you don't know my husband. I don't, but God does, and He's the one that said it. So what, you, what you're doing now is you're doubting that God has your best interest in telling you to do this. And you're doubting His ability that if your husband were to get some goofy thoughts, that God couldn't get a hold of him. Oh, boy. <laughs> you feel that? Like... <laughs> I 
This is 2005, Brother Keith. <laughs> yeah, and this is the Bible. Same thing with congregations and pastors. The pastors are supposed to be the mom and daddy of the family. Did you hear me? And the children are supposed to submit. Did you hear me? But people don't. People don't submit in mass. Why? They do not, they are not convinced that that person loves me. And so they are, I'm, I am not secure in their leadership because I don't know what they're going to do. Right? But what they don't realize is they're not just saying that to a man. God's the one who told them to do it. So they're saying it directly to God. God, and I don't know why you told me to submit to them. Because you know how flaky they are. I can't trust. I can't submit to him. Now, don't you know that? Apparently not. <laughs> oh, boy. Can you see how far we've got to go in this? Now, see, anything I or any other preacher might preach or teach or say about wives submitting to husbands, I have to wear it. Did you hear me? Because exactly the same principle applies to me submitting to my elders and submitting to my Lord. It, it, it works the same all the way up and down. But the truth is why people don't submit to those the Lord has put over them or to the Lord himself comes back to they are not persuaded of the love. Which means not completely convinced I can trust them. So I have to reserve control. People do this with the Lord Jesus. Well, if I, if I totally submitted to God, who knows what he might do with me? Where he might send me. What he might do. He might tell me to give away every dime I've got today. He might tell me to pull up my family and go to the other side of the world where they don't speak English. He might tell me, well, what if he did? What if he did? This is exactly what happened with the rich young ruler. I saw this last night. I hadn't seen it as clearly. I heard Brother Kenneth teach so ably and wonderfully on it, and, and it stirred me up in my spirit, and, and I've been thinking about it and, and looking at it, and that's what the Lord said to me last night. That's what happened to him. He came. In fact, go back to Mark 10. Go back to Mark 10. Mark 10, this young man came to Jesus, asked him how he could etern inherit eternal life in verse 17. And the Lord, you know, asked him about the commandments and he rattled some of them off to him and told him he had kept them from his youth. In verse 21, verse 21, are you there? Mark 10, 21, what did he say? Then Jesus... Beholding him, what? Loved him. Loved him. Now, why would the scripture say this? Because he is love. And he loves everybody. Because this is something particular. He is specifically ministering love to this man. With his eyes, with the tone of his words, isn't he? 
Why? Because this is the whole issue of what's going on right now. This young man has, because about what he's about to tell him and ask him, it's time for him to submit to the Lordship of Jesus. And that includes his money. Right? Like one fellow said, he thought when some people got baptized, they went under by holding their pocketbook up. Because that part of their life, they're going to stay in charge of that. But if Jesus is Lord, Lord, L-O-R-D, Lord of your life, He has got complete control. He's Lord over everything that you have access to or control of, your stuff, your life, your body, anything you have influence over, He has it. And the the young man, I mean, there's some good things going on in him. And he's done some good things. And what's happening, his heart deeps crying unto deep. His heart's crying out. There's got to be more. And there was. I want to move on. I want to go further with God. And he could. But he's going to have to submit. Everybody say submit. Submit. And he's going to have to walk by faith. And the Lord told him, he looked at him and what? Did you get this now? He looked at him, and he loved him. Do you think this was something tangible that this young man could have perceived? Well, the the Bible wouldn't have said it like this. Jesus, by faith, is ministering love to this young man. He looked at him, and by faith, purposely loved him. Love's coming out of Jesus toward this young man. And he looks at him and he says, loving him. His words dripped with love. His face full of love. His eyes looking and ministering in love. He says, there's just one thing that you like. Sell everything you got. Give it to the poor. You'll have treasure in heaven. Come, hook up with me in this bunch and follow me. And what happened? Why? 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 He didn't believe the love. Do you see that? He didn't believe it. He didn't believe the love. Say it out loud. He didn't believe. He didn't believe the love. This is bigger, I think, than we're seeing right now. The Lord spoke this to my heart, actually, early this morning. He's what he said to me. He said, he didn't believe the love. He didn't believe the love. Why? Because he had to stay in control of his money. And of his life thinking, he's looking at Jesus. Love is is coming to him in Jesus' eyes and Jesus' words. And he's looking at it. He's feeling it. He's sensing it. And he's got to make up his mind. Do I believe that this man loves me and is not going to hurt me? Do I believe that if I leave everything I know and turn loose of all my material power, that he is not going to hurt me, he's not going to lead me into failure Can I trust him? And he decided, no, I just, (laughs) now Jesus, I like you pretty good, but I, I don't know. And this is one of the most serious things that can happen in a person's life. And all of us get to different places in life where that's going to come up. And if we labor and struggle with, do I do, do I obey God, or do I not? We shouldn't be struggling. We should know if He leads you to do something, He's got victory plan. He's got something planned for you. Did He love this young man? Is He trying to get all His money? No, see, He very specifically, He didn't say sell everything and liquidate and put it in my ministry. Did He? No. I mean, so it should have been obvious. 
I'm not prophesying money out of your pocket into mine. He said, liquidate, put it all to the poor. And then you come and follow me. Did Jesus have something in mind? Did God have something good? Good in mind. Could he have trusted God? Would the Lord have hurt him? I said, would the Lord have hurt him? No, but he wasn't sure of that. That's why wives don't submit to husbands. That's why people don't submit to their pastors. That's why people don't submit to God. Got to stay in control. Don't believe the love. Somebody say, that's not me. That's not me. I believe the love. I believe the love. I'm the one. He loves. I'm the one. Jesus loves. Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and begin to lift your hands and say, I know you love me, Lord. I am confident in your love. I am secure in your love. I know, I know, I know you love me. I know you love me. I know you love me. Turn with me to Romans, please. Now, another side of this, husbands, leaders, what did he tell us to do? Love. Love. And every time a husband or a leader acts selfishly, it's harder for the people under you to believe the love. Right? Now, somebody with some maturity and understanding, they're going to submit just out because they trust God. Right? And even if their leader messes up, they're going to have confidence. God loves me enough. Right? He's going to take care of me. Even if they go get messed up. And he will. And if leaders get out of love enough, he can remove them. Did you hear me? If his people are submitting to him and submitting to them, trusting in God's love, God has an obligation, a responsibility. He can't let leaders just abuse and destroy his people. He'll do something. I said, he'll do something. You can trust even if you're not sure about the person over you is love, you can trust God's love. Right? But now I'm talking to leaders. Leaders. Jesus' husbands and uh, heads of churches. You're a husband. You're a daddy over the congregation. Jesus is our example. Right? And he has proven his love to us so conclusively how? Laid down his life for us. That's our example. Right? That we never do things just selfishly. We're always endeavoring to do the will of God and we're always looking out for those that are under us. What's not, not necessarily what they like, but what's best for them. Right? Like good parents over their children. What's best for them? And if you do that again and again, and year after year, it'll be easier and easier for people to submit to you. If they will. Now you can take, you can take one of the best leaders in the world and live in fear and refuse to submit. How many believe Jesus is the best leader in the world? Amen. And all kind of people are too afraid, don't believe his love and won't submit to him. More than one side to it. But in Romans 8. Let me read this to you before I read this passage. Don't, don't try to turn there. You're in Romans 8. But let's just listen to these. And listen as the Father now, not Keith talking to you, but the Father God speaking directly to you, or Jesus speaking directly to you. Uh, close your eyes and listen to this. 
Jeremiah, the Lord said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. So with loving kindness, I've drawn you. The Bible said, the Father himself loves you. John, he said, as, he said, as you have loved them, as you have loved me. So say that out loud. He loves me. He loves me. You, love me. you love me. Even as, even as. You, love Jesus. you love Jesus. I believe this love. I, this love. I trust this love. I'm secure in this love. So I completely submit to the will of God, for I completely trust the love of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We've gotten into some real issues this morning, haven't we? That's one reason I'm pausing and, and moving slow. Because this is, this is a big deal. Can you believe the love God has towards you? Then when He tells you something, should you labor about it? Even if it looks like he's turning your life upside down. Can you trust him? I said, can you trust him? I know not long ago, Phyllis and I, oh, it's been, what, four years or so ago now, lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We'd been there for 20 plus years. Our ministry was established there. Uh, we'd gotten some stuff there and it's paid for and, you know. And the Lord, uh, we, we've, for years, we believe God and God finally got the house uh, we had in our hearts and minds we wanted, you know, over decades. And uh, Phyllis had believed God and somebody, you know, believed God for, I don't know, two or three years. And somebody walked up to her and handed her an envelope full of money to redecorate her kitchen exactly like she wanted it. And boy, she just got it done, and I mean, it had all the stainless and uh, sub-zero stuff and all that stuff. And, and I had my airplane hanger paid for and outfitted, had an office in it with a shower, and you know, I could sit up there and pray in tongues and look down on the airplanes. <laughs> look out the door and watch them take off. All of us pay, and, and a good location, and, good, and the Lord began to deal with us about going to Branson. And then leaving everything that we had done and, and knew. And I'm thinking, well, Phyllis just got her, she just got her kitchen fixed, you know, and I just got my hanger fixed. And I checked her out a little bit, and up there they got a little bitty short runway and cliff on both ends. And, and you can't have your own hanger at the, and, and just thing after thing just didn't look too good. And, and uh, the, the more I, we prayed about it, look, the stronger the Lord dealt with us, you know, we realized He's serious about this. <laughs> about us leaving everything and everybody and going up there. I, I thought, Lord. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. And one day I, I'm, I'm shaving and, and I, this has been on my mind. And I guess I'm probably looking in the face, in, in the mirror like this. And I'm going, huh, huh, what, what, what would I do about that? And the Lord said, Keith. I said, yes, sir. He said, do you believe that I can do better for you than this? I said, yes, sir. He said, good. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. That's it. I am not going to question this or think about this. See, what, what's it down to now? Can I trust him? Right? Is he going to pull me out of a good situation and take me into a bad one? No. Is he going to take me down? No. Am I going to lose what we've built and, and what we... No, no, he loves me. Oh, come on now. He, he loves me. 
And if he says, leave this and come on, then there's something much better that we're going to because he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. So we got there. We lived in a little rental house. It wasn't anything like what we had left. But it's all right. And we were there. We thought we'd be there a month or two, and we were there much longer. And finally, though, the Lord worked it out. We got a house that put that oven in the shade. Now, I don't just have one airplane. I got two airplanes. And we're just getting started. It just increases and increases. Can you trust God? Can you trust Him? But see, it takes faith to turn loose of what you know and what you're secure in. But when you're more secure in the love of God than anything you see or feel, you can leave anything. You can get up and go anywhere and do anything knowing God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He's looking out for me. He's taking care of me. See, the, the, the vacillation people go through, and, oh, I hope I don't miss it. Oh, I hope I don't miss it. Oh, God, help me. Help me. I hope I don't miss it. I'm trying. Help me not to miss it. You're not convinced of his love. Well, I hope I make it. Y'all pray. I hope I make No, no. No. Listen, I became convinced some time ago. I am going to make it. What do you mean? Ah, Brother Keith, you, you think you're something, don't you? No, no, listen to me. I'm going to make it. Why? God loves me. He loves me. He loves me so much that if I start going the wrong way, He'll tell me. And if I don't get it, He'll tell me again. And if I don't get it the fifth time, He'll crank up the volume. He'll go, hey, Keith. And if I don't get it, he'll send four people by. Right? And they'll shake me and go, Keith! <laughs> and if I fall down, he'll pick me up. If I mess up, he'll forgive me. Right? And I'm going to do the will of God. I'm going to make it all the way. I'm going to reach out and hit the finish line. Keith's going to make it. Because God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. So I'm going to make it. Because <laughs> he loves me. He loves me. Can you feel this, friend? The more this comes up in you, what happens? Fear. Fear just begins to go away from you. Right? Perfect love. It pushes it out. It casts it out. But see, we've, we've only emphasized that means walking in love perfectly with other people. No, you've got to get a revelation, perfected revelation of how much He loves me. And then... As you get that, to knowing how much He loves me, as He love, has loved me, that's how I love you. How can I love you as God loves me? And I don't know how He loves me. You see, that's where, that's where the problem has been. How can I love you as Jesus loves me and God loves me and I don't... I hardly have any revelation of how much he loves me. So we've just been focusing on love your brother, love your brother, love your brother. Yeah, I'm loving my brother best I can. It's hard. <laughs> I'm loving him. I'm loving him. I'm loving him. I'm trying to love him. Lord, they're hard to love. I'm trying to love him. I'm trying to love him. And if that's all you focus on, you're going to fail again and again and again. You're going to come short again and again. Because how? What's the commandment? Now quote it to me. Anybody remember it? John 13, 34. This is, the, this is the new commandment. What? That you love one another as I have loved you. How would you know how to love me? You don't know how to love me 
beyond your revelation of how much He loves you. Oh, glory to God. This is better teaching than you may think this morning. This is, this is better. This is big. I said, this is big. So to help your brother, what should you be doing? Running around all day saying, he loves me. God loves me so much. He sent Jesus. God loves me so much. Jesus loves me so much. He ever lives to make intercession for me. The Lord loves me so much, He took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses. He carried my pains. He bore the chastisement of my peace. The Lord loves me so much. He left heaven and took on flesh and dealt with the curse and all the junk. He loved me so much, He went to the heart of the earth. He paid the greatest price. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me so much, He's got my name in the Lamb's book of life. It's right there. He loves me so much, He's training me to rule and reign with Him in His eternal kingdom. He loves me so much, He's building a custom place for me in heaven right now that will last forever. He loves me so much. He pays all my bills. He keeps me healthy. He loves me so much. He gives me the right answer for every situation. He loves me. Oh, He loves me. Oh, He loves me. Oh, He loves me. And you're so full of that, then you turn around and go, I'm going to love you like He loves me. Can you say amen? amen. He loves me. He loves me. I'm the, I'm the one he loves. Yes. Romans 8, are you there? Get ready to shout. Can you trust him? When you know how much he loves you, does it make you secure? Does it help you relax? It does. He's not going to leave me. Right? Didn't he say, I will never. I will never. And it's impossible for him to lie. Cannot lie. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never. Why? <laughs> Some folk are getting it in here today. I can see it. Is he always going to be there for you? Yes. Always, always, all, and there will never, ever be a time in my existence from now throughout eternity that God is not right there for me, as close as my breath. And there'll never be a time that he just gets tired of looking at me and tired of fooling with me and tired that I've made so many mistakes. Never, never, never. He's always saying, come on, come on, I'll forgive you. Come right back here. Come here. Come here. It ain't over. We're going to get this. He's always for me. He's always with me. He's always in me. See, this is so real to Jesus. You remember, Jesus told, he looked around at his disciples, and they loved him, but their revelation was limited. And uh, he said, all of you are going to leave me tonight. He was already going through this. I mean, the chastisement of our peace. We, we, we don't really know what he went through mentally and emotionally, bearing the results of the sin of all mankind. And he was pressed and he was pushed. That's why when he went further in the garden, he told the three, y'all come with me. You want somebody to be around you that you feel like cares about you and believes in you. And then he realized, they're going to they're gonna leave me too. He said, all of you are going to leave me tonight. Then he said, but I am not alone. <laughs> I am not alone because the Father who sent me is with me. And then the most awful thing happened. At the pinnacle of the crucifixion. Remember what happened? He cried out, My God, my God, why 
have you forsaken me? You know why he had to do that? So you and I could be secure that we would never have to be separated from God ever, ever, ever. He was separated. He had been with the Father from the beginning. Never any separation. And He allowed it. He let it be. And it was beyond description. Horrible. Separated from the Father. The Father had to turn His back and not look. Why? So you and I would never even have to think about that happening to us. <laughs> That's why he says so powerfully, I will never leave you or forsake you. Anybody got an amplified? Who's got an amplified? Amplified. Hebrews, let me read it to you. You got your place in Romans? I'll, I'll just read this to you. From the Amplified. Y'all getting anything out of this this morning? I tell you, I... Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Amplified does just this. It amplifies. And, and in the Greek, there's an emphasis on a word that's repeated. And the, the King James doesn't bring it out, but the Amplified does. In Hebrews 13, 5, he said... He, God Himself, has said. Who said it? God. He, God Himself, said it. I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not. In the Greek, it's emphasized like that. He, three times. I mean, the one who said light be once. <laughs> Why? Because he wants you to have strong consolation. He wants you to have an anchor to your soul. That you will never be alone. You will never be without help. He said, I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. He said, I got you. I got you. You got my back? No, I got your back, your front, your top, your bottom, your inside. I got you. I got you, and I'm not going anywhere, and I, you leave me, but I'm not leaving you. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. That's why he said we take comfort, we are encouraged, and we are confidently and boldly, did you hear that? Confidence. Boldness. Why? Because you're realizing, He loves me. He loves me, so fears fade away. Perfect love casts out fear. I will not be seized with alarm. The Lord is my helper. I will not be in dread or terrified. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now with that in mind, look at Romans. The eighth chapter. Oh, the apostle Paul, I should just say Paul, he had a revelation of this. And he got to preaching here about it. And we need to get happy about it this morning. He said, Romans 8, 31. Come on, help me with this now. Let's, let's finish up good and strong. Are you, re are you ready? Punch your neighbors if they're awake. Punch them. Not with a fist, just in love. <laughs> 31, are you with me? Yes. Paul, uh, he, he, he gets to rolling here now. 
he gets to preach and he says, what should we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What's the answer? What difference does it make who's against you? If God's for you, is He for us? Is He always for us? Always be for us. He said, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? People that are saying, God, I just don't know, is it your will for me to be healed? What do, what do they not know? They don't, they don't know how much He loves them. Don't have a clue. God, I don't know. I, I hope you'd get, send, give me some money to pay my bills, but I don't know. Is it your will? They don't know Him. They don't know His love. When you know how much He loves you, you don't ask dumb questions like that. You say, dumb? Yeah, dumb. Because if He was ever going to withhold anything from us, it would have been Jesus. Right? And He loved us so much that He gave Jesus spirit, soul, and body for us. And He said, and if He did that, how shall he not with him also freely give us anything? All of, I mean, a car, a house, clothes, money. What is that besides what he's already done? And it all comes together anyway. Keep reading. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. Is God trying to find fault with us? And charge anything to our uh, against us? No, he's the one who justified us. Who is he that condemns? Is the Lord condemning us? No, the, the Christ died and is risen again and is at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. Why? So we won't be condemned. Who? No, get it, get it, get it. Who shall separate us? Come on, we ought to begin to get happy on this. Now, who, who can separate us from the love of the anointed one? Who? What? That's when he gets on the roll. He says, shall tribulation? That's right. The crowd at Rome there, they said, no! The saints of God at Rome, they were believing this love. By this time, he, they, they're getting convinced. God loves me. I'm the one he loves. He said, will uh, tribulation uh, separate you from the love of God? He said, no. Will distress separate you from the love of No. How about persecution separate you? No. Will famine separate you from the love? Now, let you stop. Let's try. If it won't. Then you're in the love. And the love, see, you're not just living in famine. You're living in the love. And love supplies all your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because <laughs> separated from the love means God couldn't get to you. He couldn't take care of you. Ain't going to happen. Never going to happen. Right? I can't get in a place where he can't take care of me. Long as I believe his love. There ain't no there ain't no place on the planet where God can't get to me and take care of me. There's no physical problem. He can't heal, he can't feel. There is nothing. That's what he's saying. Shall, shall this tribulation, shall this distress, shall this persecution, shall this famine, shall this nakedness? Peril, what's the answer? No. Sword? No. no, 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 no. Why would you be afraid of terrorism? The sword. Why? Why would you be afraid? You think, I know the Lord said He loved me, but you know, stuff happens. 
And I know them folk didn't want it to happen to them either, but you know, you just never know. Yeah, you don't know (laughs) the love of God and how much He loves you, but you can. And it's not, it's not something that you have to figure out in your head. You believe the love. You just by faith accept it and say, yes, 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 I believe it. By faith, I accept it. He loves me more than anything in this universe. He loves me and all my brothers and sisters. He loves me. He loves me. And there is nothing that can separate me from His love. Keep reading. He kept preaching. Didn't he? He said, it's written. For your sake we're killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Now let's say you are a, mar- a martyr. Is that a bad thing? You won't think so later on. In glory. No. If the Lord called on you, stand up like Stephen, be willing to preach, and die from persecution. Man, you ought to pop that up there and go, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? We've already talked about it. He didn't even see death. He was in love the whole time. Can you see? Did, what, did the stoning separate him from the love of God? No. He was in the love of God the whole time. Can you see this? Keep reading. What does he say? Verse 37. This proves we we had the right answer all along. Nay. What does nay mean? No. 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 We need to be a little bit more animated about this now. What? No. No. Yeah, that's pretty good. No. No, no what? No. No. You got to back up. No what? No. Tribulation cannot separate us from the love of God. No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? Sword? No. 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 High gas prices? No. No. Terrorists? No. Hurricanes and earthquakes. No, no, no. Nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No matter what comes or goes or what's in the mist or what's around, I am in the love of God. He loves me. He's going to take care of me. He's going to protect me. He's going to watch out for me. And you'll get bold and fearless the more this dawns on your spirit. You'll talk like the psalmist of old. You'll say, let me tell you what. No evil will befall me. No plague. None will come near my dwelling. A thousand may fall over here. Ten thousand may fall over here. It won't touch me. Why? Why? Because you're super duper Christian? Because you're no more word than anybody? Because you're super faith man, woman? No, no, no. Cause? He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. And nothing, nothing, nobody can separate me from his love. So I'm secure. I'm secure in his love. Now keep reading. He said, Hallelujah. Verse 37, he says, What? Nay, no, in all these things. Now see, we've quoted part of this verse and left off the the end of it. We're more than conquerors. How many times have you heard that? More than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. And then something comes up. Whoo, that's scary, isn't it? (laughs) Why? Because you ain't more than conquerors except. You see that? You see that? We are 
more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Through Him we love? No. No, we love Him, but that's not the big thing we got to work on. <laughs> through Him that loved us. That loved us. Now get this, verse 38. For I am persuaded about what? The love of God for me. To me. That's what the whole passage has been about. I am persuaded. Say it out loud. Say it again. I am persuaded. Persuaded of what? God loves me. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death nor life. That covers a lot of ground right there, those two. <laughs> right? Because most everything you're going to experience is going to happen either in life or in death, right? But I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present right now, are things to come in the future. Oh, can you see this? Can you see this? I mean, the man's preaching. The man's preaching. Right? He said not height, not depth, no creature, no creation shall what? Oh, oh. shall be able. Can't is not able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us. Nothing. Nothing. Stand up on your feet and shout about it. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for loving us. 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 Musicians, singers, y'all come. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving me. Say it out loud. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. I am the one. The Lord loves. He loves me. I believe this love. I completely trust Him. Hallelujah. If I got the wrong mic, is that all right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel like we could shout about it some more. Let's just ponder it in our hearts just a moment. Can anything separate you from the love of God? No. Nothing. How about your sin? No. Your failures? No, other people's mistakes and their failures and shortcomings. Well, Brother Keith, they, they've messed it all up. I was serving with somebody and now they've messed everything up and, and now we can't do the will of God. Oh, no, no, God still loves you. He's still got a plan. He's still got a way. I can't, the other people's failures can't separate you from the love of God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let's praise Him some. Oh, Lord, we believe Your love. 
Oh, we believe your love. You love us, Lord. We believe your love. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nothing can separate me. Oh, from your great, great love. Hallelujah. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. You will never, 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 never let me down. Oh, I trust you. Oh, you are faithful. For you love me. For you love me. You love me. Oh, I know you love me. Oh, you love me. I believe that you love me. Yes, you do. You gave yourself for me. And now you live for me. Oh, you love me. You love me. Everybody say, you love me. I believe you love me. Every voice said out loud, you love me. I believe you love me. Oh, yeah. Sing it again. You love me. Yes, you do. And I believe you love me. Oh, yeah. Before I knew you, you knew me. Before I loved you, you loved me. You love me. While we were yet your enemy, you gave yourself, you died for me. You love me. Oh, yes, you do. Everybody say, you love me. Oh, I believe you love me. Oh, you love me. You love me. I believe you love me. Oh, you love me. I can trust you anywhere. With anything, anytime, cause you love me. Yes, you do. Oh, you're always looking out for me. You always have my best interest. You love me. You love me. Sing it real strong. Tell it. You love me.
listen now. Not only have people not believed the love that God has for them, but people have not believed the love that other people have for them. So many cases where the devil has lied to people. He said, they don't really love you. They don't really care about you. They don't, they're not going to really stick by you. The devil's a liar. I said, he's a liar. And he lies to you about God loving you. Oh, God's tired of you. He's tired of fooling with you. You've missed it a thousand times in that same area. And he's fed up with you. And he's, he's tired. No, the devil's a liar. God's not fed up with you. He's not tired of you. He loves you. I said, he loves you. But the thing the Lord prompted to me, so many people need to believe that others love them too. There are wives that need to believe. Your husband has told you he loves you, but you haven't believed it. And wives have told husbands, but you haven't really believed it. Believe it by faith. Say it out loud. They love me. Say it by faith. I believe they love me. Yeah. Say it out loud. They love me. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your parents. I believe they love me. Your pastor, your brother in God. Oh, they love me. Oh, they love me. I believe they love me. Yeah. Oh, they love me. Oh, they love me. Be quick to believe the love. They love me. I believe they love me. Most of all, you know the Lord, so tell him again. Oh, you love me. 